Hey there, America. This is Ben Goldman coming to you July 31st, and I'm bringing you the news on the Ben Goldman Show. First off, let's talk about last night's debate. Hooey! It was a crazy Democrat debate, but debate last night. We're going to tell you who the winners and losers are. First off, let's start with old Senator Bernie Sanders. Bernie was a big winner of last night's debate. Oh my God. God, so obnoxious. I'm not a socialism fan, but the guy did so much better than almost everyone else on the field. Sat there, pitched his crazy ideologies, and his ideologies are crazy. Socialism's crazy, but Bernie learned his facts, has known them over years, and has used them, has used actual facts to pitch something that's entirely wrong. Unfortunately, other people on stage who challenged him didn't do it with enough heart. I believe in the words of President Donald John Trump, heart is the difference between business and politics because you gotta appeal to people emotionally. And Bernie did just that. He did. When he looked over at, uh, I believe it was Tim Ryan last night, when Tim Ryan was trying to say, oh, Bernie, you don't know your own bill. And he's like, of course I do. I wrote the damn bill. Second of all, I do know and I wrote the damn bill. That was a winning moment for Bernie. That was a huge moment for Bernie. God, and honest, like, I, I wish someone else had performed. I wish other people had performed. Elizabeth Warren did fine. Obviously, Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren had made some kind of pro-socialism pact before the debate even started because they teamed up and took everyone on together. Instead of using the opportunity to attack each other, Elizabeth Warren, by the way, another one of last night's deba uh, debate's big winners, but they, they teamed up. They looked united. They pushed socialism. And they sounded much more enthusiastic about it and as though it would help the American people than the stuff the moderates were pushing, unfortunately. But it wasn't just Bernie and Elizabeth that won last night. There was another winner. In fact, the winner of the entire internet, Marianne Williamson. Yep, old Marianne is back again and bringing up some real fire with her. You see, during last night's debate, or after last night's debate, she was the number one most searched candidate across the entire country, other than a single state. Every other state, Marianne was the one people were looking for, and they barely gave her debate time. But you know what? She used that debate time well. She said things like, Donald Trump uses dark psychic forces to be able to control hate. Having here tonight, if you think any of this wonkiness is going to deal with this dark psychic force of the collectivized hatred that this president is bringing up in this country, then I'm afraid that the Democrats are going to see some very dark days. Or yodel. She yodeled during one of her answers. Did you guys see that? It was insane. God. Oh, and let's not forget about her little yada, yada, yada Seinfeld quote. She was rambling on talking about voters and was and ended her statement with yada, yada, yada. Who themselves have taken tens of thousands and in some cases hundreds of thousands of dollars from these same corporate donors to think that they now have the moral authority to say we're going to take them on. I, I don't think the Democratic Party should be surprised that so many Americans believe yada, yada, yada. I knew exactly what she was doing much more entertaining than the rest of them. Mary Ann did a great job last night. She did phenomenal, and obviously the internet felt so too. After the debate she got out there, Anderson Cooper tried to challenge her, say, well, Mary Ann, I know you're probably not gonna win this election, so who else would you support to get your agenda done? She was like, you have me, you have me. I'm the only one who'll get the agenda done. This is Mary Ann saying it, obviously, but she said, I'm the only one who'll get the agenda done, so why do you need anybody else? Dumb question. Shouldn't ask that question. Mary Ann is the candidate that represents herself. Um, the losers. Oh man, it was a bad night for moderates. They did a great job fighting against the socialists, but they didn't do a great job fighting for themselves. And that's where the issue came in. If you fight against hardcore socialists, but you can't defend your own ideologies and you can't suggest your own ideas and solutions that appeal to people, then the socialists will win every time. That's the sad truth. But politics really is just a game of playing to people's emotions, and that's what that's what the moderates failed to do. Buttigieg actually even had some really powerful moments, some really good speeches. He sounded pro I, I would I'd say he sounded the most professional on stage, but at the same time, he just couldn't get it. He just couldn't manage to land it. He just couldn't get it in. That was the issue. Bernie, he even even at one point. He said, we can't let these crazy socialists, which is what he called them, crazy socialists, 
run the country because no one will vote for us and it's all bad ideas. He's right. He's right. Problem is, is he didn't tell us enough about what his good ideas were and that's why these socialists keep doing so well. Unfortunately, their ideas are enough to win people over and if you can't present something against them, something to counter them, something that solves America's problems, because they do know what America's problems are, they just don't know what our solutions need to be. Unfortunately, the moderates didn't hit on either one of them, and that's a sad thing. That was a sad thing to watch that go down. Um, and there were other people in the debate, uh, I, I believe his name is Delaney, Delaney. He, John Delaney, looks stoned the entire debate. Looked like he had smoked a big old fat bowl of marijuana, come out there and was like, hey bro, we just gotta do this. And yeah, he was a moderate, and yeah, some of his points were really smart, but God, John, wait to smoke until after the debate, after the debate. If you make it to a second debate, hold your marijuana cigarettes until after the debate. Ugh, obnoxious, ridiculous. Everyone else lost. That was the reality of it. Tim Ryan tried, but I mean, let's be honest. Are we really going to get a bunch of like, are we really going to get Democrat primary voters to vote for moderates or God forbid, healthcare industry, like healthcare industry professionals, big investors. This isn't who the Democrats are going to vote for. They may get their money from them, but they're not going to vote for them. So that's how last night's debate went. Now let's get down to night two's rundown. Night two, we have a bunch of big candidates. We got Joe Biden. We got Kamala Harris. We got Tulsi Gabbard. We got Cory Booker, Andrew Yang, and so many more. So let's start with old Joe Biden, sleepy Joe Biden. Um, well, hasn't kissed his granddaughter on the lips any more times recently, but he needs to get out of the shadow of just being Barack Obama's lackey. He was his he was his buddy. He was the high, hi Obama, I'm going to high five you on everything. That was Joe Biden's role in the Obama administration, high fiving him doing cute little videos with him. That's why people like, Joe. that's why a bunch of young people still do like Joe because of Barack Obama, but Obama won't endorse him. And frankly, if he wants to be able to do well, he is viewed as the moderate choice. That's why he has support. He's like the main moderate choice, but he needs to prove that he's better than socialism. And unfortunately, he hasn't do that. Tonight he's planning on going after Kamala Harris hard on her record, on her policy and on her flip-flopping. But Joe, you still got to bring something to the table, buddy. You still got to bring something to the table. You may be the top polling person. Surprisingly, he's actually polling ahead of everyone else with, uh, with Democratic black voters by more than double. So Kamala and Cory Booker are trying to pull that card all the time. They're not getting anywhere with it. Joe Biden's still winning this somehow, but his numbers are dropping fast and he's got to kick it into high gear if he's going to change that. Uh, let's go to Kamala Harris next. If you don't remember, uh, Kam Kamala, Kamala Harris, if you don't remember old Kamala ended her first debate with that whole line about, I was that little girl. We've also heard, and I'm going to now direct this at Vice President Biden. Um, I do not believe you are a racist. And I agree with you when you commit yourself to the importance of finding common ground. But I also believe, and it's personal, and I was actually very, it was hurtful to hear you talk about the reputations of two United States senators who built their reputations and career on the segregation of race in this country. And it was not only that, but you also worked with them to oppose busing. And, you know, there was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. Joe Biden was anti-busing. Kamala Harris got bused to better schools when she was young, dropped that I am that little girl line, sold a bunch of t-shirts. Great line, powerful line. Unfortunately, she had nothing to follow it up with. She went and did interviews. She flip-flopped on all of her positions. Originally, she said she was for Medicare for all, then against it, then kind of for it, and kind of against it. Kamala, people don't like wish-washy. People don't like it. You won't win votes. And frankly, you're not going to become the nominee if you keep doing that stuff. Um, she also needs to convince America that she's not just an empty suit, that she's not just a series of well-written, and that was a well-written can line, but it was a can line. 
She's going to go out there. She'll look like Marco Rubio did if she keeps dropping that when he told the same the same canned joke four times in a row. But this is the this is the thing. Kamala Harris has to be able to pick that up. And she actually and like I said, she can't get the black vote. She's tried. She picked up some of it from that busing line, but she's still a crazy West Coast person who has socialist ideologies, has tied herself into a very corrupt group of people in California. It's just getting some like major, some major, like mainly white celebrities behind her, honestly. And she's not picking up the black vote. And that's going to hurt her ticket a lot. Honest to God, if she loses California, there's no chance in heck, in heck, that Kamala Harris will be the Democrat nominee. Um, let's move on to old Tulsi Gabbard. You guys may remember Tulsi. The, uh, she's from Hawaii. She, at least she's a senator from Hawaii. Uh, big, she's served in the military for a long time. She's very big into the military. She's an isolationist, surprisingly. Uh, wants to cut off all of our, all of our military and stuff to other countries. Wants to lesser our foreign aid. Tulsi Gabbard isn't really that far from Donald Trump, minus a couple socialist policies. But what kills her with the Democrats is that Tulsi used to be an anti-gay marriage lobbyist. Most America really doesn't care anymore. A lot of Americans don't even think that the government should regulate marriage because it's a religious institution and people should just have civil unions. And I guess Tulsi may be one of those people, but she went hard against gay marriage back in the day. And that's going to kill her with Democrats. Um, also, Cory Booker, old Spartacus. I am Spartacus. I'm Cory Booker. Cory's crazy. Cory Booker's the joke of the Democrat field. Cory Booker has less support from black Democrats than even Elizabeth Warren. Old race faking Elizabeth Warren. Cory Booker is losing to her with only 4% of black Democrat voters supporting him. Cory, drop out. Go back to doing your stupid thing. Go do a web show. Go, maybe people would like you saying dumb stuff online, but they sure don't like it in the Senate. And you're a joke. You're making the Democrats look worse for president. Maybe, hey, that may be a good thing for Republicans. It's probably not a good thing for the country. Cory Booker, just, just drop out. Andrew Yang. A lot of, there's a lot of virality around Andrew Yang. Big tech guy, pretty big socialist. Uh, he, he has some pro-economic ideas. Unfortunately, he also believes in a guaranteed income for everyone in the country. I believe it's about $12,000 a year per person. No matter how lazy, no matter how much you don't want to work, that's Andrew Yang's, that's Andrew Yang's big pitch is guaranteed income. I'm going to give everyone guaranteed income. But Democrats, DNC specifically, is tired of him. If you guys didn't know, the rules for these debates is that you have to have gotten a certain polling level from four selected Democrat polls, as, long, as well as your fundraising. Yang easily reached the fundraising goals, but... He wasn't able to get all four of the polls in his favor. He tried to go to the DNC with his own poll to prove that he had support, but they said, ah, oh, forget you, Andrew. You're out of the third debate. This will be his last time in the debate. This may be the last time we ever hear from Andrew Yang. Kristen Gillibrand. Kristen Gillibrand, I give you some credit, Kristen. I'm not a big fan of all your policies. You did oust Al Franken because he sexually assaulted several women. You said you were one of the only Democrats last week when the Democrats tried to revive Al Franken's career. You were one of the only ones who said you were proud of getting him out of Senate. So thank you for that. Do you think Senator Franken was denied due process by not having a hearing before you called for him to resign? Senator Franken wasn't denied any, anything. Uh, it's his decision and his alone whether to wait out his ethics committee hearing, whether to wait for his next election. The decision I made is whether or not to carry his water and stay silent. And given eight allegations, two since he was senator and the eighth one being a congressional staffer, I couldn't stay silent. And I could have told my colleagues then that there is no prize for standing up to a powerful man uh, and trying to hold him accountable when he's good at his day job. I could have told them then and I'd tell them now. But you have to have the courage to do it and say what you believe anyway. So do you think you are being unfairly targeted? Uh, you know, there were other senators who called for the same thing, but you were the first. Yes. Um, there was 34 other senators, senators that called on him to resign. You wouldn't know that today, given that I seemed to stand alone. But I could not stay silent. I could not defend his actions. And to somehow blame me for a man's actions and a man's decision, it's pretty absurd. Thank you for that, Kristen Gillibrand. 
actually have a lot of respect for her on that particular statement. She's also planning on going hard after Biden, going to call him anti-women, and that's all based on a, uh, on a bill in the 80s that was supposed to give child tax credits to women that Biden voted against. And you know what? Biden's not that good at taking on a tax. I'm sure he'll prep. I'm sure he'll try. But he's not that good. That, that could honestly kill Biden, especially between her and Kamala. Old white guy, old touchy white guy, not going to look that good. So this may be the end of Biden, too. Biden's got a big, tough night tonight. And let's not forget my personal favorite joke of the Democrat Party, Bill D. Blasio, mayor of New York City, Bill de Blasio, one of the most hated mayors in the history of New York City, hated around the country, can't even pull in the top in his own city for his presidential run, and yet he's running for president. This is the guy that went up with Hillary Clinton, made racist jokes about CPT, which he called cautious politician time. Sorry, Hillary. I was running on CP time. That's not, I don't. I... We know what that means, and it's offensive. It's offensive. Bill de Blasio is pretty much a racist. And let's not forget, he hates his cops, too. He's been completely okay with people in New York City attacking cops with water guns and water buckets while they're walking around patrolling in uniform. Hasn't said a darn word. Bill de Blasio, no one likes you. God. No one likes you. You're the same guy that tried to ban President Donald Trump from his own city, New York City, while he's president, which you can't do. You have no right to do that, Bill. You don't even have any support. Like I said, you have no chance in heck of winning. I'm going to enjoy you crashing and burning tonight, though. That'll be a fun one. We'll probably cover a good amount of Bill de Blasio's, blooper, de Blasio's bloopers tomorrow. That'll be a fun one. And there's some other candidates. Julian Castro, San Antonio mayor and Obama's secretary of housing and urban development. Um, Michael Bennett, a senator from Colorado, and Jay Inslee, governor of Washington state. If you didn't know, Washington state's trying to give free money, to trying to give taxpayer money to all of its citizens to then give back to politicians so that they can give it to their campaign managers and make more money. They call it democracy dollars. I used to work in the campaign world, folks. That's not democracy dollars. It's a it's a wet dream for it's a wet dream for people that want to be campaign managers because it means too much money is going to go into politics. It'll have nowhere to go, and they'll just start charging more. That's Inslee. Those are the other candidates. I feel like I feel like Gilligan's Island. You guys remember the original one where it was uh, the professor and all the rest here on Gilligan's Island. It was like two other people. I feel like I'm just all arresting these guys, but honestly, that's who they are. Anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. If you like the show, remember to follow me on Facebook at Ben Goldman Show, on Twitter at uh, Real Danny Gold, and on Podbean at bengoldman.podbean.com. Thanks for tuning in. Look forward to talking to you again tomorrow, roasting a few more debate candidates. You guys stay safe and enjoy the rest of your day.